and welcome back guys to another episode of Unplug TV Sunny Hot Australia. This time with some very good news. Ah, little Dave is so cute and fluffy now in winter time. Hey guys, uh, you remember Jeff from Canada? He's one of my subscribers and who's coming there? <laughs> Are you after food? So Jeff was commenting on my videos for a long, long, long time. Well, so this video did not work as planned actually. I was just inside editing the first few scenes for this video and I, I, somehow I didn't like it. I wasn't... I told Jeff's story not correctly I thought. And I also got distracted with the horses and dogs all the time so it was just a nightmare to edit and everything. So I said just go back in the garage and just record it again. Well, here I am. So I will use snippets of both. <laughs> I will use uh, snippets of both versions of this video. So excuse this um, Frankenstein kind of video now. But um, yeah, I don't want to film everything again. Um, uh, yeah, let's get started. So Jeff was really interested in the Outlander PHEV, and that's why he subscribed to my channel. But he was also very scared to buy one because of the battery issue. And it was kind of like a back and forward, back and forward all the time. So he was he was pro the Outlander PHEV, and then he was saying, "No, I'm not buying it." And then he came back and said, "Ah, oh, yeah, it's it's pretty good actually. I did another test drive, and everything seemed to work fine for me." And then all of a sudden he made a deposit on a Toyota Rev4 hybrid and <laughs> we all said oh god this is if you don't know the the Rev4 hybrid this is the one of the scam cars Toyota has they're making these false claims about a self charging hybrid car anyway he made this deposit on this Rev4 hybrid he borrowed the PHEV again for a weekend and said oh that's a pretty good car I like how it drives and how smooth it is and I really like the car but 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 this battery problem this battery problem gives me the shits and I don't want to spend all this money and have the problem the same problem as everyone else and I was thinking, okay, so now he's buying an Outlander PHEV and lives with a battery issue, degradation situation. Yesterday he posted something on my channel, basically saying, yeah, f all this shit with these cars now. I'm not buying a PHEV, I'm not buying a hybrid, I'm going full electric. So at the moment he's doing test drives with the Hyundai Ioniq with about 200 kilometers of range. And also with the Hyundai Kona with about 450 kilometers of range. And then he will make a decision to buy either of these cars. And I think this is a fantastic, great decision. This is the right decision not to buy a hybrid or plug-in hybrid anymore, but going full electric. So Jeff, I am I'm very happy for you for making this final decision now and going ahead buying a full electric car now. So I'm really jealous, good on you. And he also said to open a YouTube channel and share his experience with the electric car over there in Canada. And I said, look, if you do that, call it EV Unplugged. <laughs> Just to totally confuse Gary Reed because he always gets it wrong. He always says EV Unplugged, EV Unplugged, Unplugged EV. Because he, he, he always messes up my channel name. He always says I'm EV Unplugged, but I'm Unplugged EV. So we've got now two channels now. One is Unplugged EV, which is mine, and the other one, uh, Jeff's channel, is EV Unplugged. <laughs> So Gary, this is for you just to confuse you totally. And uh, yes, there is a EV Unplugged channel on YouTube now and I'm the first subscriber. <laughs> there, There's no content on this channel yet, but there will be content. So I think this is all very exciting news and it took, it took Jeff quite a while to make this decision now, but it's 100% the right decision. It's 100% correct not going with any of these cars ahead, but go full electric. So again congratulations good on you okay let's see if this works here 
Uh, I don't want to stand in the garage all the time and making videos, so I thought I'm going in the garden. So the other good news is, it's falling off here. The other good news of the day is, yeah, and then the other good news is we've got the first car back from the dealerships who did not get a new battery, but got the triple procedure. So, so I'm I'm talking about the first. <sighs> So I'm talking about the first used car with no battery swap, but getting the triple procedure. It came back on Friday. Yeah, Dave picked up the car on Friday afternoon in Brisbane. And I must say the result looks very promising. And hooked up the dog immediately to read the state of health, of course. And because he's not an Android user, he uses um, Apple stuff, whatever. It's, it's his own fault. So he hooked up the EV Batmon. It's like a universal PHEV watchdog for all the electric vehicles out there. And it showed him 39.9 ampere hours state of health. So it went back from 32... Uh, and interestingly is this is a 2014 model as well so it has it is quite four or five years old now and still the battery went back to 40 ampere hours he could um, drive about 300 kilometers so far just had a couple of charges in between did public charging as well as home charging and did hybrid driving all this kind of stuff and so far there was no decline in state of health full EV range is restored the car is doing ex exceptional well it drives like a new car and that's exactly what my experience was as well it's like it's like a different car because you've got the full EV range back ah oh, we're getting this amazing light here again so and then he posted on the forum here comes the six million dollar question will it last and you know I had feedback from other people around the world they had uh, triple procedures as well by their dealerships which didn't work on their cars and I still think we are missing something important which needs to be carried out during this triple procedure and only this guy in Adelaide knows what it is because when cars are being booked in to the dealerships here in Australia they're always talking back to this team over there in Adelaide where the headquarter is and they walk them through the correct procedures what to do in what order and and what they need to pay attention of and i think it is more than the reset the cell smoothing and the db cam after all there might be as i've said many times there might be something missing which we don't know about but this team obviously knows it and from what we can see um, a four four and a half five year old car battery goes back to 100% basically yes and again this proves the battery in the car is fine it is purely software related so the technology is brilliant but the overall software and code is just shit. hello Dave Off they go. Now, of course, uh, this is very, very early. Picked up on Friday, today, Sunday, two days only since the triple procedure. I'm I just want to give you this quick update what is happening. I think um, Dave will comment here as well and um, share some of his experience so far. But from what we can see, it, it seems like the triple procedure works with existing cars as well as cars which had the battery replaced. But um, as always, it is far too early to actually make an assumption and go public with all this stuff. I would still hold off with um, talking to your dealership and asking for the triple procedure because it may not work on your car because of this secret ingredient which we don't have. And it is quite amazing because this is a 2014 model as well. And the battery still seems to be totally fine inside the car because the full capacity is the full capacity is still available in this car after f after almost five years now. Well, at least this is all good news, I think. I'm happy that these procedures are working on used cars as well with used batteries. And from what we can see, it looks like it is a software related issue with the BMU code which is not able to determine the true state of health and neither it is able to learn from its mistakes. So the battery state of health 
goes only down. But of course we need more, da more data, more information and we need more time to test all this out. As soon as we have news about this I will update you of course on this channel here. And as far as my car goes, well, I read all your comments on my last two videos and it looks like there are heaps of speculations going on at the moment, what is actually going on with the car. And, well, we don't know. We don't know. It could be all of this or nothing. It is hard. It is hard to say. I sent an email on Friday to Mitsubishi straight away after the... And I got an email back on Friday night. Uh, Mitsubishi is um, and Mitsubishi is now asking for my charging habits so they would like to confirm how I charge the car how I use the car and trying to make sense and compare this all this information with the other cars who had the triple procedure already still again it is far too early to make an assumption and to to build up a trend or something on the PHUV watchdog website we just need more time and more data points to to make sense of all this um, information until then i'm happy to um continue with the speculations <laughs> the only the only argument what people could bring is maybe that i am charging on 6 amp all the time and the 6 amp setting is the slowest you can charge the car with and it, it works totally fine. It might be that the BMU is not able to calculate, and, and this is just a thought I came up with, the BMU might not be able to calculate the ampere hours correctly and add them up while charging on 6 amp because the current and the power is so low. And again, I have tested all this 6 amp, 10 amp and 15 amp settings. I can actually show you here. Um, Well, so as you can see all these numbers and figures here on the on the whiteboard, which I have here for months now um, 6 amp setting I have tested five days and Noted the state of charge right away after the charge was finished and you can see um, it has Overcharged I mean overcharged in terms of the state of charge went over 100% on three different occasions the next five days I charged on 10 amp this is down here and again I had I had three days over 100% and two days below 100% and you can see the voltage um, not over 4.1 volts directly after the charge has finished and then we did the 16 amp settings down here and again three times of the five days over 100% no difference 16 amp to 10 amp to 6 amp and last not least this is the 10 amp standard charger which came with the car and we overcharged only twice here in these five days but the voltage is again 4.1 volts maximum so nothing different to all these charger or EVSE settings I could not see any difference at all the, the actual car charge is totally fine regardless what the EVSE setting is so I'm not sure if the permanent 6 amp charge does make a difference in column count what the BMU does in terms of um, adding ampere hours. The ampere hours don't add up and it gets confused and then it reduces the state of health by 0.1 ampere hours. So I will, the next couple of weeks I will charge on 10 amp only and see if this makes a difference at all in terms of degradation. Um, I cannot imagine it makes any difference at all, but who knows, who knows? Oh, the pump is running here. That's fine. We don't know if this makes any difference or not. I cannot imagine it does. But who knows? Okay, so far this um, quick update. I always say quick update. It's not a quick video. It's not a short video. I know this when I start filming. There's so much to talk about. It's all the information I give you today. So let's see how everything unfolds and develops. And I will be back shortly with another update for you. Okay, guys. So far these um, Frankenstein parts here. Um, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for your support. This is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia signing off. You stay charged and we will see us of course in the next video. Okay, see you then. Bye bye.